Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And today we're taking a look at another performance-oriented SSD, this time from Corsair. Now this guy is the MP600 Pro GT XT? XT. XT. It's very fa extra tremendous. And uh, it's the third, I suppose, in the MP600 line. They've got the Core, which is the QLC. The regular Pro, which was their high-performance model that's now been uh, supplanted by the XT. And what's new here is that they've gone to that popular, oh so popular, Fizon E18 controller, the Micron NAND packages, and and uh, Fizon firmware. And actually, you've got all three here. How do you keep track of which is which? Um, well, you can tell which one it is by the fact that they're all the same color. Um, so the Corsair one is a little bit different. It's glossy black. The other ones are more matte black. Ah, uh, the PCBs. Okay, so what we're looking at are, uh, these are the uh, uh, Fire Cuda 530 and the Fizon board. And I know that one because it still has the sticker on the back. This is the Fizon reference design that came with this red heat sink. And this is the Corsair board, which is essentially the exact same thing. They all have the exact same model on the PCB. So it's... They're coming out of the, the same line. This one's just a little bit darker on the PCB. And it comes with a, uh, a pretty aggressive looking heat sink too. So that's what we're gonna start to see. These guys that are leveraging the E18 controller or anyone else's controllers for that matter, once they get onto a good one, and Fizon really does have a good controller uh, with this E18 NAND combo, firmware combo right now, uh, anyone that's not making their own controllers in-house will be looking to the, the best alternative. And again, this one did really well kind of sitting on top of these other two drives, right? Yeah, locks up with one another, and it came down to who has the most design elements in the uh, heatsink. Yeah, well, I mean, the heatsink in this case is pretty nice. It's a, uh, a chunky, I, I think it's kind of aggressive looking, uh, kind of ridge deal. There's which a lot is, of mass to it. Yeah, it has some mass to it. Now, of course, if you put this into most modern gaming boards, you'll toss the heatsink aside because they've got their own built-in or in a notebook, of course, there's no heatsink there. Nope. Um, no. No lights. It, it, well, so that's the other thing, right, is you can differentiate on firmware if you want. You could tune firmware or uh, scale it for thermal throttling. I mean, the vendors can do a little bit with firmware, but at the end of the day, they're going to be down to visuals, aesthetics, software, which we can talk about a little bit. Uh, and things like uh, the ridge design here. To Kevin's point on lights, WD has enjoyed their lights in the past, and, and other one brands. Light. One WD hours. has enjoyed their light in the past, so it could be that uh, these SSD guys slam a light on there to be uh, their big differentiator. One other thing that Corsair is doing, though, that's really cool from a differentiation standpoint is uh, if you take a look at this, this shows, of course, our Ridgeback uh, design on top, but the one below is a copper-cooled Hydro X edition uh, for those that want to water-cool the drive. And I guess this, if you're already in on water-cooling on your rig, it's not too much of uh, an yeah, extension. Yeah, you're adding another loop, uh, but it doesn't, uh, I wouldn't say it has a high functional need. A lot of the drives don't put off a ton of heat. But if you, do, if you have a completely silent case with only uh, movement of water through it, it's nice to add a little loop and it brings some um, little orchestration into uh, the case design. Well, plus it helps you go to sleep, that nice rhythm of the waves in the background. I turn off my computers when I go to sleep. <laughs> All right. So we've, what, what we have then is a drive that we expect to be good, we know is good because of what we've seen from the other vendors ahead of them. Kevin, let's take a look at the performance. So overall, I mean, performance is pretty good. The only thing, uh, like in this test, that uh, stands out is it's in lockstep with the uh, Barracuda 530. And, or Fire Barracuda, Cuda these days. Barracuda, yes. that'd be hard, uh, hard drive. Yes, yeah, so you, you went back a half a decade there. Yeah. So the only thing that's uh, faster in sequential read is that uh, E18 sample board, which will be dropping off uh, going forward just because... Uh, while its performance is really cool, none of the vendors that we've seen so far are leveraging that firmware. So, so somewhere between the reference designed and shipping product, another firmware rev came out, and that's what you're seeing in the difference there between the uh, Fire Cuda, the MP600 uh, Pro XT, and the Fizon reference design. Yeah, so overall very strong in uh, yeah. sequential uh, rebandwidth. Yep. 
On Switch or Write, again, the E18 uh, SSDs are just leading the pack. And you see the, uh, the 530 and the Corsair and the reference board all just dominating that test. Okay. On random read, uh, the E18 devices do pretty well, although uh, that SN850 really comes snaking along and <laughs> like where everything Quite else, literally. yeah, it comes at around like 560 or so uh, KIOPS. Uh, that uh, the WD is pushing uh, almost 800,000 IOPS. So it, I mean, a lot of these things is going to come down to um, which uh, workloads uh, are you going to most leverage or which design looks coolest when it comes to uh, a lot of the uh, comparables. Then we go to uh, random 4K write, and uh, the E18 just dominate uh, uh, 4K random write performance. Yeah, nice, nice and tidy with those pair of snakes at the end. Yeah. So the, for, uh, and this, this is through almost all of the benchmarks. It does incredibly well. It's either at the top of the pack or, uh, re- or leading. I mean, it's... So at this point, we can feel pretty confident now that we've seen the reference design and two new boards with the E18 on it, that this combo best SSD for performance end user right now? Yeah, I mean, the only thing that could really come out would be if there's, like, longevity issues or something, but, I mean, that could be the case with any of the new drives. Well, sure, that's the t- uh, some chance you take um, any time you, you adopt a, a new controller that uh, you know, they obviously work really hard to make sure it's good and stable and everything, but we don't always know. Okay, but, so what we have now is a really high-performance drive I think the heatsink looks cool if you need it. Aesthetically, it's pretty neat. They've got the liquid cooling option, which is really neat. Two really big problems. One, and we'll start with the easy one. The toolbox drive management software that handles firmware, uh, smart data reporting, is flat out atrocious. It's well past its prime, but then again, uh, outside of docs or doing LED color management, no one uses them anymore. Okay, so Kevin says no big deal. I think it's hideous and looks like it was designed in the AOL era. And it it's, does look like that. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we said this when we looked at the core and the pro a while back. Like, guys, could you throw an intern at this thing? It's really terrible. And it's just worse that, to Kevin's point, you don't use it that much. People don't update firmware a whole lot. But this is a new controller, and there is a higher likelihood. I would estimate, based on what we've seen in the past, that there will be firmware updates. So it's still functional for that, but when you look at what Samsung's doing, WD, Seagate, those tools look way nicer. They look really cool, but I'm not sure if they add a a big functional element behind it. No, not functional, but it's a brand perception thing. Like, if you're going to do this nice design on the board and have great drives, then... Having well, when we were doing the, uh, is it, it might have been MP600 Pro or the uh, 600 Core, you have to do a lot of work to even find the toolbox. So it's not like they're really mentioning it, they're trying to push it. It's in the reviewer's guide, though, still, which has got to yeah. be an embarrassment. That's why it's on page 12 of 13. All right, anyway, minor complaint maybe, but it is, at the end of the day, a little piece of, uh, of the puzzle if you're trying to compare this versus another drive. The second thing, and this is... A marketing thing. What's well, I think it's technical resource availability. You have well the endurance spec. I, we identified this, you know, a, a couple days ago to Corsair, and it's funny because we're a little late to the the party with our review, but no one else seemed to call this out. As you look through the spec sheets and in the other uh, tech publications reviews. The endurance spec on this drive, the Corsair drive, is way off. And what it looks like to me, I'm, I don't know what happened, and we asked and we'll find out. Well, it's the exact same spec. Is the, the Pro XT. Or, or the, I'm sorry, it's the Pro, right? Yeah, which is on the older controller in different NAND, which it, I mean, it's exactly the same for the one terabyte, two terabyte. So it looks like someone in marketing cut and paste the spec sheet from the last drive and just kept it the same. The Seagate quote is about double for yeah. the the terabytes written it's 16 or 1400 versus what 25 50 or something yeah yeah so we do need to square that away before we feel super confident just to make sure there's nothing screwy here but as you guys can see and as we've discussed the boards it's the same drive so there's someone's wrong uh we're just not sure who it is yet but i'm guessing that uh, corsair just made an oopsie in the uh, data sheet updates. Well, a lot of this comes, You most of the vendors right now aren't leveraging their own in-house products. They're all depending on outside agencies or 
um, a, a vendor that's producing these boards. So you don't, uh, the person that uh, is writing the spec or knows exactly what these components are uh, going to do might not be an employee of the company that's retailing the toys. Uh, that's a good point. And that's just where we are. That's how contract manufacturing works. It's been that way with SSDs since the jump and even hard drives to a certain extent before then. So that's where we are. It's a really great drive. There's a question on endurance that's probably fine. Uh, there's the toolbox, which super stinks, but Kevin doesn't care, so maybe that's fine. Now it's just going to come down to aesthetics and, and pricing, and uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. I mean, you'll either like one design or another if you want to be in the E18 and get the high-performance gaming and, and whatever other workloads. Um, it'll come down to price, yeah. right? So there you have it, another great drive from uh, uh, Corsair on the Fizon E18. Uh, fantastic chart topper, just as we expected. Just comes down to what you want in your system. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.